Hey everybody, it's Rick Jansen, Top Cloud Agents uh, with eXp Realty, and I am thrilled to have Paul Tylock from Lafayette, Louisiana on the show with me. He's an icon agent, and before we get started, I just want to remind everybody about our disclaimer. The materials and content discussed on this show are the opinions of Rick Jansen and or the guests interviewed. This information is intended as general information only for listeners of the show. They should conduct their own due diligence and research before making any business or investment decisions. This show is produced completely independently of eXp Realty and is not endorsed, funded, or otherwise supported by eXp Realty directly or indirectly. So now that we have that out of the way, I think it'd be much more exciting just to kind of get to know you, Paul. Uh, so for those of you, uh, including myself, who might not be 100% familiar with your background, uh, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, you know what your real estate business has been before EXP? Sure, yeah. I was, uh, whenever I was 18, I started uh, with a company called Slumberjay. It's an oil field company. Okay. And I was with them for 13 years, and I was laid off uh, December 20th of 2014. So I was with them for about 13 years. And uh, my wife was a mortgage lender, and so I had decided to, a uh, few months, thank God, a few months prior to getting laid off, I decided to get my real estate license just because, uh, I don't know, I've been there long enough. I can kind of see the writing on the wall that, you know, something something's fixing to happen. Uh, yeah. They were kind of laying with a few guys, and sure enough, my my name got pulled, and uh, so like I said, I got laid off December 28th of 2014, and I had walked into Keller Williams January 2nd of 2015, and <laughs> I, just as green as you know some of the people that we deal with on a daily basis. I, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Matter of fact, the first day I'd, I'd walked in there, uh, yeah, everybody was kind of running around crazy, and I mean, I, I came this close to asking someone if I can go to lunch. I mean, I, I was just so used to having a normal job and and uh so i mean it was a uh, it was definitely a, a, a huge change in a, sure. in a positive sure so you started off 20 you said 2014 yes sir uh as a real estate agent and um how long were you with this other franchise model uh, i was with them for probably about a year and a half okay um, and, and, and uh, got recruited to exp okay and what was it when someone shared exp with you uh, what what was appealing? What stuck out? Or how did they how did they approach you even? Like yeah, that's a great question. Like hey, they recruited an icon agent. That's awesome. They must have said something something good. Well, I mean, it, it's a it's a guy named uh, Ricky Tucker. Me and him, uh, he was the Louisiana State broker at the time, and uh, he put in a call, you know, a few times. And uh, I was so committed to you know to to Slumberjay. I never left there, even during the bad times. So I was a little on the fence, you know, like man, I'm just got into to, to do real estate. I don't, you know, I'm not really ready to jump, jump ship. You know, I was kind of, I guess I was kind of happy with the, uh, the people that were there and, and all that. But whenever I sat down and he started telling me the potential uh, discounted stock purchasing uh, plan, which is something similar we had at Slumber J really caught, you know, caught my, uh, caught my attention. And um, it took me a couple of months, but ultimately I ended up, I ended up making the move. It just made too much sense uh, for me not to. Sure, sure. So you didn't have a, did you have a huge book of business at that point or were you still kind of in your, in your getting started phase? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was still kind of, kind of getting cranked up, you know, I mean, I did pretty well my first year, but I was still kind of, you know, trying out new things and, you know, kind of flying, flying bl blind, you know, depending on my immediate sphere and, and, and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, I loved that at the time I was with, that was another thing at the time I was with Commission Zinc uh, and I was, you know, paying, Twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a month, and then you know I got explained about conversion at the time, and I said, you know, that that was something that definitely uh, you know, was appealing to me. And then then again, the stocks and you know how they seem to uh, you know, EXP seemed to get it as far as technology and all that, which is primarily what I was interested in. Uh, you know, not not a huge you know open house guy or door knocking and all that. I understand it works for some, you know, for some, but uh, just kind of wasn't really my thing. So. That, that's all that's ultimately what drew me to uh to exp okay and so you joined up in what 2016 then or 2017 yes sir yeah 2016 <clears throat> so you've seen some changes just in that short period of time probably in in the technology and the evolution of the, the training classrooms talk just a little bit about that because you were still relying primarily i imagine on exp for your training right because you're kind of new 
you're green and you're saying, I, I don't know what to do. I got I to gotta start cranking out some leads here. What, how did that work for you? Yeah, so whenever I got in, I started, uh, you know, wrapping my head around conversion. As, you know, anybody knows, it's, you know, it's a lot, you know, to, to wrap your head around. So, uh, you know, I was doing basically, uh, you know, conversion. You know, I was getting, you know, just like anyone getting the leads from Realtor.com, and, uh, you know, which I, which I still do. I've, I've been committed to them for, for a while. They seem to work well uh, for me. So I was getting different online leads and, and uh, you know, through various different people. And then I, just recently, probably about six months ago, I really wrapped my head around KV Core and how to, uh, you know, adjust the smart campaigns and and all that stuff, and it, and it's made a world of difference. Just you know, six months ago. Um, yeah. You know, so. and I don't, I don't think I've really do, you know done a deep dive on KV Core on this show yet. So talk to us a little bit about that because going from I mean I looked at Commissions Inc. too when I was independent, um, and man, it it did get expensive, right? So now you switch over to KV Core, but a lot of people probably have some apprehension or some nervousness or they have this amazing tool in front of them that they're not using right so what's the incentive like wow you know six months ago you started using it what changes have you seen to your business or how did you learn it yeah well i mean I, you know i'd uh, i've always been the type you know i have a real estate coach that that has shown me you know other things outside of you know keller williams or or, or exp and uh, so i kind of you know kind of started moving into that and one day i just sat down you know i said i really need to wrap my head around this this KV core thing. And I'm the type that, you know, I, you, you put an hour long video in front of me, you know, phone rings, next thing you know, I'm, you know, so I, I really sat down and, uh, you know, dug deep into it and man, it's, it's powerful. You know, yeah. it, it really is. It, if you just like anything, if you follow up and, and you get your automation all in place and all that, it, uh, it's definitely a huge help, you know, because before, and, you know, you, sometimes you'll get 60, 70 leads in a month. And a lot of people are like, wow, you know, you got to sit there and follow up on every single one of them. And I was at, at first. And so I really started learning how to adjust, you know, the, uh, you know, send out automated text messages and all that stuff and really kind of filter out those people before I, I would actually take over. So it's, it, it's there. I would definitely, you know, get through the training videos and, uh, and like, the youth. The customer support, I was just talking with them uh, on the little instant message thing. I mean, they're usually there within five or 10 minutes responding to any questions you have. So they do a pretty good job with that too. So it's a tool that EXP offers for uh, way cheaper than anywhere else. So I figured, hey, I, I need to start looking into this. And yeah. I'm really glad I did it. And now were you just kind of experimenting with your own trickle or was your coach giving you a, sort of the, the smart campaign or are you just sitting in there and like, okay, I've got to type this up. How would I think? If I were a buyer or a seller, how do I want to be contacted and, and brainstorming? Right. Yeah, it was it was basically just through, uh, you know, just through experience, you know, noticing that, you know, a lot of people's preferred way of communicating, at least at first, is through text messages. Uh, so so a lot of times, like if somebody would come through Realtor.com, you know, I, I don't really give this this huge spiel like, hey, this is Paul Talock, EXP Realty, you know, on a, on a text messages. On a text message, I just simply shoot a text and say if it's, you know, Realtor.com lead or KV Core lead or whoever it may be, say their name's Karen. I just shoot them a text and say, hello, this is Karen. I mean, who wouldn't respond to that? Right. You know, so after that, uh, at least you know you got the right person. You know, if they, they text back, no, just, oh, sorry, you know, someone from this number, you know, you know, inquired about a property, so I apologize. Uh, and sometimes they say, oh, yeah, that was me. I just put in someone's name, someone else's name. So. So I, I kind of keep it uh, pretty simple and uh, filter them out that way. And like you, like you were asking, just through experience, I've noticed just some some things you say that trigger, uh, you know, trigger people to to respond. I guess so. I've, uh, I've had some success with that. Yeah. What are some What are some of those things that trigger people to respond? I mean, sh share. Ooh, we're not man. We're not in Lafayette, so I'm not poaching your clients. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it, it even all the way goes down to, you know, if they inquire about a, you know, $140,000 property. Yeah. So, so even with the, the way that they uh, inquire about, you know, a specific property or KV Core can, you know, you could look at every property that they look at, look at. And if they're looking in, you know, that 140 to 175 range, you know, chances are that's probably a first time home buyer. So I may send an email out that that's pertaining to, you know, 100% financing. It still blows my mind how many people think, you still need 20% down to, uh, you know, to purchase a home. So just, just things that, you know, I think may kind of trigger them. And, and ironically that, you know, they'll respond to that, you know, so, uh, 
can't really think exactly off the top of my head what I what I say because it's no, all that's awesome, automated. Though. But yeah. uh, just yeah, things like that. That's awesome. Now, uh, mm -hmm. how how have you seen your business grow since joining EXP? First, like your real estate business, and and what you know, how has that helped you grow that? And then also just kind of growing your your revenue share model. Uh, you know, kind of sharing the company with others, just like I think you said, Ricky shared it with you. Right. Yeah. I've, uh, I had, I haven't been too, too big on, on recruiting, but yet still was able to get, I think I have nine or 10 people under underneath me and it's people that, you know, that just called me that, Hey, you know, I see you doing pretty good out there. What's, what's the XP this, that, you know, and they will meet for, for coffee or meet for lunch or something like that. And, uh, and yeah, just kind of tell them, tell them about it. And I mean, it, everyone, it, it definitely catches any, everyone's interest. You know, I mean, there's no one that's just going to step back, you know, because I love the fact that, you know, we have different revenue streams and, and, and you just do the same thing you do anywhere else, you know, just help people buy and sell real estate, you know, and I, you know, I, I personally kind of got a, a little bit of a different model than some, I mean, I, I got into flipping houses and, and buying rent houses and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, there, there's a few things that, you know, I've had some, some success with, you know, out, outside of, you know, just being, being a realtor that, uh, you know, I've kind of grown into doing as well and, you know, built my own website and learning how to do the Google AdWords and, and all that. So it's, uh, that's why I love real estate. You know, you could be so, so diversified, uh, in it. And I mean, EXP's definitely, uh, I don't know, man, they, they just, it's a different drive with this company, I guess. Yeah. Now, do you market yourself as EXP or do you market yourself as a different company, like an independent brand? Uh, if, yeah, if, if, as far as if, if any, if I have any motivated sellers that come, kind of depends on, you know, which, which, uh, system they come through. I would just, you know, Hey, this is, this is Paul Tylock. And then, uh, I always like to meet with them first and find out because sometimes I've always noticed that it may not be the best thing to put a sign in someone's front yard. Sometimes these people are in unfortunate situations, the bank's knocking on their door or the house is falling apart or whatever, whatever the case may be. And, and i built the ability to where I can actually purchase the house from them. And then uh, I turn around and list it myself. And, uh, you know, so, so I've, I've gotten into doing that uh, recently. And, and matter of fact, I've had leads that come through KV core that, you know, they need a house to sell they're downsizing and, and uh, you know, Hey, this is, this is what, you know, we can list it for and sell it at. This is what I'm willing to, to give it, uh, give you for it. Um, and you ultimately make decision. And that's, yeah. that's, that's the one that I'm going to go. And most of the time it ends up, resulting in a listing, uh, which is, you know, what I hope for, you know, but uh, cause I definitely want to try to put as much money in their pocket as possible. So. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I've gotten into flipping a bunch recently too. I've got uh, three properties under, under construction at the moment. It's an exciting field for sure. Yeah, it, it's true. And, and I think I kind of learned that, you know, whenever I went to, you know, one of my listing appointments where, uh, you know, I, I told them that the average days on market was, you know, 100, 110, 115 days. Like I don't remember the exact number. And he said, man, I got to sell it now. Hmm. It's, it's got to go now. And, you know, he had some personal issues. So it, it just struck my interest to start, you know, I need to, I need to get into that. I want to be that guy that walks into someone's house and I can do anything you, you need me to do, you know, so kind of like that handyman. So, uh, so yeah, I, I got into that uh, pretty, I mean, pretty much right at the end, the tail end of my first year. Okay. Uh, before with uh with exp and uh but it, it's it's grown you know a lot more since uh since then just with experience and doing some knowledge sharing with some other local guys and other you know other guys around the country so uh so yeah yeah that's awesome that's funny when you say 110 to 120 days it's a different market down there <laughs> up here in denver like you know still if you're sub 500 you're off the you're off the market in like 24 hours maybe seven days uh oh man yeah. Find, finding some 500 properties to work on is really a challenge. Sometimes I have to make a decision in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes, sight unseen, and it's 10,000 non-refundable. I'm like, oh, okay. wow. Yeah, it's a different market <laughs> up here. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're committed to buying the property in 10 days cash. It's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> let's rock and roll. I said, got to go find $430,000. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you better know your market on, on that, just jumping into something like that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like reaching icon. And then, you know, I think you have to do, was it 20 deals or 16,000 to the company after that? I think no 5,000 to the company after that. Uh, so tell me a little bit about making icon and um, you know, what that experience has been like. Have you done it multiple years or just the one year? 
Uh, no, this is my second uh, second year uh, doing it. And uh, I'll be honest with you, Matt, when I got the email, um, I've, I've just always been, I mean, the realtors that are close to me know I just kind of put my head down and just, just rock and roll, you know, and I just got an email one day and I see an icon agent. I'm like, oh, what's this about? And I, I, at the time I wasn't really 100% positive about the, uh, you know, the requirements and all that stuff. And it, it basically congratulating me that I made icon. I'm like, oh, okay. I, all right. <laughs> so I'm on with Ricky and I'm like, Hey, I just got icon. He's like, Oh, what? So we're all kind of freaking out. I was like, man, I, I, I didn't even know, uh, you know, I got it. You know, I was kind of just like I said, I put my head down and just keep rocking and rolling. Uh, and and yeah, it's but it's uh, definitely a pretty cool feeling. Yeah. And then so I mean, immediately you get what twelve thousand in stock that you have to vest in a little bit. And then if you go to the, how do you get the other four thousand? Or talk, talk to me a little bit about that. You have to go to the. Uh, they, they just changed that, I believe, for this year. Uh, the first year I got the full sixteen, and now they changed it to where you have to go to the. Uh, the stockholders and uh, EXP con. So it's okay. two and two. And have you been, have you been to either of those before? Uh, I, actually, I haven't. We have a newborn uh, at the house. Uh, hey, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I say newborn at the time when all this was had, he's 16 months old now, but okay. uh, yeah. And, and we have a seven year old. So it kind of just, you know, hit us, uh, hit us at the wrong time. We had just moved into our new house uh, probably about 10 months ago. So we, we, We've been having a lot going on, building the house and everything. So it just, uh, I was never able to, to get away. Yeah. Are you planning to go? I mean, you've got $2,000 of incentive to go to Orlando this year. Is your wife saying go? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, things have settled down. So I definitely plan to go uh, this year for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm planning to go. We'll see whether my three, five, and six-year-old really allow that to happen. My wife's okay. like, well, let's see what their mood is that week kind of thing, you know? Yeah, that's a handful <laughs> Yeah, we do hands full of blessings. That and two puppies. We're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like if, when I find a quiet time, like right now, to record, it's fantastic. <laughs> I know. Huh? Yeah, I, I work out of my house, so yeah, I, I don't like when school's out. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's a funny thing too. Like I think EXP really does appeal to people who you know they're already working out of their house. So why do I need to go to an office and pay for an office? Why do I need to go sit at a front desk and take floor time? I've got other ways to generate leads and that, you know, waiting for the phone to ring on someone else's listing and praying that they're an unrepresented buyer. And that seems like a really unrealistic way to make a living. Yeah. I mean, i sometimes I still have to pinch myself because whenever I was working in the oil field, I was like, man, what do, what do people do and work out of their house? You know, this, so that was another thing, obviously that was, that was appealing to me because I found even whenever I was at the other, other brokerage, I, I still worked. I, I don't know, just, I, and I understand some people do need that office for that light switch to go off. My wife's like that. She's a mortgage lender. And, you know, she was like, if, if I, if I would stay home and, and have to work, I'd watch the bachelorette all day. I, I just couldn't do it. You know, so, you know, that, that's my wife's way of, you know, when she leaves the house that, that light clicks on and, and come five, six o'clock, you know, you get back home and she, you know, she turns it off. So I understand it. And, you know, we have a small office here and, and there's a couple of agents that are like that. You know, they, uh, you know, some of them need that light switch. You know, I, personally, it uh, the model works. You know, really good for me. And I think the days of, you know, meeting, you know, everybody meeting at, you know, a certain brokerage offices, and, the, and I think that you know those days are kind. Of, I've never had anybody ever. Hey, can I come to your office? You know, we always maybe meet for coffee, we meet for lunch, or we may just schedule a couple of showings and just kind of talk it out amongst you know the you know the houses that that we're looking at. Uh, but yeah, I I don't see that as a being a huge deal, you know, needing a, needing an office. Yeah, I think you and I are very much alike that way. My buyer, my buyers are always like, "Wow, you're willing to pick me up? That's that's great customer service. I don't have to come to your office, like whatever. Like, yeah, I'm going to pick you up. We're going to go on the tour because all that time we spend commuting, this time I can get to know you, build rapport, bond, you know, right. <clears throat> demonstrate my knowledge, my market knowledge, my neighborhood knowledge." Why wouldn't uh -huh. you? Yeah. And finally, I had someone come to me and they're like, oh, yeah, usually the agent is like, well, why don't you follow me? I'm like, what a lost opportunity. Who cares what kind yeah. of car you're driving? Like, ditch the sports car, get a couple of back seats, and let's rock and roll. It's, yeah, about, making, you know, it's about making profit and paying the bills for the family, right? Uh huh, sure. <clears throat> I mean, I say that in a business owner standpoint. Obviously, it's about taking care of the client. <laughs> I don't want to be misunderstood. Right. Yeah. 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 
So uh, the nine folks you have kind of on your on your front line, are they all down there in Louisiana, or are they kind of joined you from around the country? No, they're, they're all here uh, in Louisiana. Yeah. Yep, all yeah. local. And how's that been going? And it's been going well for them, I would imagine. Yeah, it's going good. I have uh, I have one uh, that, that me and him, you know, we, he actually came from Slumberjay as well. Okay. So so me and him worked together for years, and uh, so me and him talk regularly, and I think he missed – uh, icon agent, uh, I think maybe about one or two uh, closings. So he's he's getting there. I got I got a couple of other underneath me that's fixing the cap. So I mean everybody seems to be seems to be enjoying it, man. So it's it's definitely a good feeling. And you know they they, they we, we do some knowledge sharing. Uh, you know we we talk, we text. You know, hey Paul, I'm kind of stoked on this. You know, so we we all kind of keep in touch pretty pretty well to make sure everybody's plugging away. Yeah. Now, what would you, <clears throat> looking back, I mean, it, it's only been a couple of years, but looking back, what do you wish you had to, would have known, like getting going? Like, how could you have ramped up faster? Or how could you have assimilated it into EXP faster? Or what was there that you didn't know was there that you're like, oh my gosh, had I used this sooner? Like, what a game changer. I think we've already talked about KV Core, but was there anything else? Um, I mean, no, man. I think, uh, I mean, KV Core has kind of been, the, you know, the biggest the biggest thing for, for me, because there's, there's a lot of, I mean, if you look at Boomtown, Commission Zinc, you know, you know, KV Core, you know, every, everybody seems to be using some type of customer relationship management system and, uh, and, and they're expensive, you know? Yeah. And I mean, that's, yeah, it's very intimidating, especially for, for newer agents that are, especially single agents, like, wow, you know, this is a thousand dollars a month, you know? I mean, is there something else that I can, maybe do. And, and like I said, there, there's a lot of people that are maybe intimidated by KV core, but once you wrap your head around it, it's, uh, you know, it's pretty good. So I, I do wish that that's something that I would have, uh, I would have done a little bit earlier, but I think my main thing would probably be, um, learning how to talk to, uh, to potential buyers and sellers. You know, you can't, you, know, you have your, your A's, B's and C's, you know, your A's that are looking to, you know, buy or sell within the next 30 days and then your B's and C's within 30 to 60 and so on. I was treating everybody like they were an A. Yeah. Every single person that came through and someone's, you know, three to six months out, you know, you got to got to kind of watch how you don't want to be, I don't want to say pushy, but, you know, you, you have to ask the right questions to figure out their time frame and, and you know, be able to, to, you know, follow up with them correctly. And, you know, and that's another thing that I, I, I never, I, I used to have it all here. You know, now I have a whiteboard, I have my CRM, you know, I'm writing notes in KV Core, I'm doing, you know, Google Calendar, make sure you reach out to this person October 31st because their lease is up in December. You know, it's just things like that that I've never done before. You know, it was always just focusing on who's ready now. Right. And, uh, yeah, and, and that's something that I've changed uh, recently. And like I said, I, you know, I look at my whiteboard now and, you know, I got, you know, 10 or 15 A's, you know, I got 20 or 30, you know, B's and C's and, you know, I got everything in my, <clears throat> in my Google calendar and then notes, you know, here and there that'll let me know, you know, Hey, this person, you know, they were maybe working on their credit or they were going through a divorce and they can't, you know, they can't do anything until they, you know, they go through a divorce, whatever the case may be. And those used to just slip through the cracks. For me. Yeah. If you're not ready now, I, I'm out there and I'm still looking, you know, and a lot of people don't realize it. You know, everybody wants those A's, but once those A's go away, the the ones that were B's now they're A's. Right. You know, so you, you know you have to. You know, it's all in the follow up and and how to uh, stay in touch with these people. You know, the the correct way and not to sound, you know, too pushy. Nobody likes that. You know, if you go furniture shopping and the salesman's following you around, I mean, that's aggravating. You know, hey, I'm just looking. You know, <laughs> right. let me, let me put my butt in the couch a couple of times, like <laughs> yeah, 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 kind of kind of back off a little bit. So that's something that I wish that I would have learned uh, a while back. But, uh, but yeah, I, I realize it now. So I've, I've kind of put some things in place to, uh, to kind of help me with that. I think, and I think that's excellent advice. Yeah, you know, just having, running your business like a business, right? And, and actually following through. It's not just about how many cousins or relatives or close friends are going to buy a house this month. You're going to run out of those in two or three years. And you'll only yeah. do three to four deals a year, you know, but that's where most people stop, right? They make it, they make a living for three years or making 30 to 40 grand a year. And then they're like, okay, real, real estate wasn't for me, but it's taking it to that next level. You know, you say you're doing Google AdWords and then calendars and whiteboards and CRMs and all that. I think that's, 
that's really where someone's business will take off to the next level. Uh, all right, just yeah. one, one last question here. Are you doing your Google AdWords through, um, I know EXP offers some paid advertising. Are you doing it through them or are you just kind of experimenting on your own? I'm experimenting on my own. I had, uh, I had a company that built a, a site for me for uh, my motivated seller site, I call it. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> what they what they do is, you know, they'll, they'll uh, build your site for you. And then after that, they you'll have a call with them uh, twice a month and you'll basically get into your Google ads and then they, they'll do the Zoom or not Zoom, uh, the one where they can use your mouse and all that yeah, stuff. Screen and they share. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, screen share and you know it's all about you know the negative you know taking out the negative keywords when your site popped up whenever uh, somebody was searching through Zillow. Well, okay, this site is not for people that's looking to buy; it's looking for people to sell. So it's just it's kind of learning you know all of that stuff. So they actually teach you how to do it because you know I I think those those days of paying someone you know a thousand or twelve hundred dollars a month. Uh, whenever they're only using fifty percent of that for for marketing dollars, gets a little old. So <laughs> very old. Uh, yeah. So I've kind of gotten to the point where it's you know I want to start learning this stuff on my own, and uh, yeah. So that's kind of what I'm I'm in the process of doing now, and and it that kind of came around the same time I started you know with the with the KV core thing too. You know I really need to sit down and start learning how to do this stuff on my own at least. At least some of it, because I, I mean, I believe, you know, everyone should have at least five or six lead gen, different lead generating systems out there, whether if it's Zillow, Realtor.com, KV Core, or Realtor.com, open houses, door knocking, you know, whatever. They, I think there's five or six different things that, because that, there's not one thing out there that's just going to be hitting on all cylinders all year round. Right. You know, they, they always kind of dip and, you know, Realtor.com, I'll, I'll knock it out the park one month and then, you know, kind of, kind of get some, uh, you know, have a little downturn for, for a few weeks. And then next thing you know, I got three or four approved buyers. So, you know, you kind of want to fill in those gaps with, with different things. So uh, that's another thing that, you know, I've learned over about the, you know, the past year, year and a half, just to make sure you always have, you know, different things going on, not just focus on one main thing because uh, it, it will go stale. Yeah. And do, do you set yourself like a minimum, a minimum number for performance every, every week or every day? Like, how do you, how do you know? And okay, I've hit the minimum. If I have to, I can go relax. I can go take care of the baby or my wife or take care of me. Uh, do you set a, a standard or just kind of, you just put your head down and crank every day regardless? Yeah, I kind of just put my head down every day uh, and just, and just rock and roll. I mean, I, I do pay attention to how many pendings I have. Um, and there is, you know, it, whenever that number starts getting a little low, obviously there is a little bit more sense of urgency. Um, <laughs> you know, to, to maybe, you know, maybe, maybe I should jump into KV core or, you know, call these old realtor.com leads back or, you know, maybe do an open house or, you know, something, you know, reach out to some family members or, you know, Hey, you know, so-and-so just, just graduated. And I know, you know, my fourth cousin down there is a nurse now. She's looking for a house, or <laughs> whatever the case may be. So, right. uh, so yeah, but there's really no, you know, no specific number that, you know, I say, Hey, I have to, I have to do this, you know, every single month because I just, uh, and I think that has a lot to do with me coming from where I used to work. I mean, for 13 years, I was off for, uh, four days a month for 13 years. So, uh -huh. you know, this right here is uh, kind of awesome to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I've had a number of coaches over the years and um, have one now, great coach. And one of the, uh, you know, one of the things they say is like, this really isn't hard work. They're like, if you want hard work, go into an oil field, <laughs> you know, like, that's some hard work. You're on a rig. You could get killed. You're sweaty, covered in mud, covered in oil, sharing a bed. Like, that's hard work. This is complex, but it doesn't necessarily even have to be, right? It's, it's just work. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, you can feel it. I've, I've seen it before in the past where, you know, like you said, like, oh, okay, you know, I can kind of, you know, I have 10 or 12 pending. I can kind of back off. And then next thing you know, two or three weeks go by and half of them are closing. It's like, uh-oh. You know, so you you got to kind of uh, know when to let off and, and, and when to, you know, keep it going. So I just try to always keep it going. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and like, it, it, it doesn't seem like work to me, you know. So, uh, I mean, I, I can get up at, you know, get up, go to the gym, drop the kids off and all that. And I mean, I, I can rock and roll doing this till 10 o'clock at night. It, it, it doesn't bother me uh, it at is, all. It is so, a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I definitely, I definitely enjoy it. Cause I know if it doesn't work out what I have to go back to. So 
<laughs> that's my drive right there. <laughs> there you go. Like if I if I stop working, I've got to go oil field. No, thank you. Yeah. Can really work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right, Paul. Well, hey, I know you got some. You got to put your head down to work right now. But thanks so much for sharing all your time, uh, your personal experience with EXP Realty. I really think it's important that you know people hear what it's about. They think it's all about recruiting. They think it's all about you know. Some people are like, oh, I, I don't want to stop working, so I don't join EXP. I'm like, whoever said you're going to stop working? Like seriously, yeah. like you got to <laughs> still sell some homes. You got to still help some buyers. I mean, that's that's how the whole thing is built. Right. And you're not sure. even out there recruiting and you've got like nine folks have joined up with you. They're very happy being with EXP. They just came mm -hmm. to you and they said, how, and they came to you and now you make a little rabbit revenue off of them. How awesome is that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's pretty cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, Hey, thanks so much. And you know, one of the other things that I want to make clear here is like Paul and I are in no way related on the revenue tree. And I reached out to Paul and he was just like, sure, man, happy to help. Happy to share my experience. And that's, the culture of EXP that you really do find. And one of the things I'm enjoying most about the show is that just reaching out to people, they're so willing and able and free to talk and share and best practices. And, uh, you know, Paul, if uh, someone's down there in Louisiana or in Florida or New York or Alaska and they want to get a hold of you, what's a, what's a great way just to say, hey, I want to connect with, with the man? How do they get in touch Call with you? Me. Call me. Okay, what's your number? 337 654 zero five six nine and your email you address and your email address and where can people find that prime website that you have uh that one is uh cash for lafayette homes.com okay and, and my uh email address is p as in paul tylock which is t as in tom y l o c k the number one at gmail.com that's my personal email awesome. that way i don't get you wrapped up with the lead and i start you know, asking you where, <laughs> what area you're looking to buy in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want his drip campaign taking over. Just contact no, him yeah, directly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome, awesome. And if folks, if you know anybody else who should be on the show, uh, or if you have any questions, comments, concerns, just give me a call. My phone number is 303-589-2320. And that can be reached at richard.jansen at exprealty.com. That's J-A-N-S-O-N, richard.jansen at exprealty.com. Hey, uh, Paul, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you being on here. I know everybody who's been watching or will watch in the future is really going to appreciate it too. There's a lot of good takeaways here. I'm definitely going to go check out your website and just say, wow, how could, how could I make something like that happen here in Denver? That's fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. No problem, man. And thank you. It was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Have a blessed day. All right, man. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.